So we're over 400 years on from when your man Galileo first invented the microscope. And in fact, primitive microscopes have been around for quite a while before that. You also had around the same time the invention of the telescope, a chap called Lippershe is cited with that. But when we look at the two of those together, telescopes versus microscopes in the battle of the lenses, which comes out on top? Well, in my view, I actually think that telescopes would win that battle. And there's a reason for that. Albeit the technology has evolved over time, especially in recent years, we go through to things like the electron microscope, which have really helped further our understanding of what is invisible to the naked eye. To the other end, where in telescopes, you've got far more impressive things, I think, such as the James Webb telescope, putting out pictures like this. And both of these are pretty cool, admittedly, but there seems to be a lot more curiosity and interest in that which is much bigger but further away and making those tiny objects bigger for the human eye compared to that which is right under our nose. And I certainly think we probably know more about space than we do about the organisms in our soil. But that's all changing. And we're gonna try and change that today because we're gonna have a look at what you could do with a smartphone and some simple lenses. Now, there are other videos that exist which have already looked at this using things like little laser pointers um, to add kind of a bit of magnification to a, a smartphone camera. Uh, they're all good and all but are they actually useful? So I'm gonna go one better today and try and get something that is actually a useful tool. And we're gonna try this tool out against a conventional microscope. So today it's Battle of the Lenses. Okay, so let's get started. If you've ever seen any of the videos on YouTube showing you how to use your smartphone, and turn it into a microscope, videos like this, or perhaps like this, they all make it look really easy. Now I'd like to say that was the case here, but it wasn't. Once I had got my laser pointers together, I found a couple. Uh, one is an actual one I've been using for presentations. One is one that I bought just for a bit of fun. Um, once I got them together and smashed one apart, I did actually find the little lens piece that they all talk about. And so I set about trying to assemble my smartphone microscope. Right, so I started to assemble it and I don't think it's quite clear from those videos how fiddly this really is. You can see I ended up using a hair clip. I remember seeing this on another video a while back where because the lens is so small, you can kind of wedge it into the hair clip and put it exactly in the position you want on the back of the smartphone over the camera lens. Uh, but it's really fiddly. You can see it's taken at least three attempts. What I haven't shown you is picking it up off the floor as well. Um, it's a tiny little thing to find when I mean, you've got two dogs chasing around at your feet. It's not the easiest thing to kind of do in an unpressured, calm and collected way. But eventually, I actually got there. Um, I thought it didn't work at first. You can see it kind of came out quite blurry initially. And then all of a sudden, I had that eureka moment that Galileo must have had all those years back. Um, and I found that I could actually see some really quite interesting things on the palm of my hand, namely how manky, cracked and chapped they are. And probably I need to start considering using a hand cream. So then I had a little look at my wedding ring and actually I was quite blown away by how much magnification this actually gave me. So it's really quite impressive. So with all of that said, I kind of felt that I had something that was operational, as good as it could be. Now is the time to have a look at a soil sample. So I did my usual. I went out to my garden and I collected a little bit of soil and put it in my test tube. I then put some water in it and gave it a really good shake to release all of those microbes into the water before pipetting it out onto a slide. So blobbing a bit onto the slide and putting my cover slip 
over the top. I also forgot to mention that this kind of setup with the smartphone needs a light stage. And I actually found an old light source, this thing which I used in some of my early videos, made the perfect light stage to put the slide on before assembling my smart microscope over the top. So once I had everything set up, I actually kind of got a nice little workflow going. It was a bit fiddly at first, um, really need a steady hand for this or to build some kind of staging. I built my staging in the end out of a load of placemats because it allowed me to adjust the height to exactly where I wanted it. But overall, um, I don't know what I expected really. Starting the video with this comparison, battle of the lenses of a full-on kind of microscope versus a smartphone kind of camera microscope, I suppose the result was inevitable. The results are going to be fairly limited and that they were. That said, I suppose in terms of the detail and the level of magnification, I was moderately impressed. It's a shame with the actual lens, you know, this kind of little tiny lens used for focusing a laser beam in a laser pointer. The issue with that is you get a nasty kind of fish eye type effect on it. So you never really get a completely flat image filling out the whole square or the whole of your field of view like you would get in a normal microscope. Um, but after a while, I kind of got my eye in. I'm just kind of putting up some of the images I captured along the way, um, as well as kind of learning how hairy my soil is probably because of the dogs kind of padding about near it outside. Um, I can actually work out a reasonable bit of detail, including some of the soil aggregates and even little chunks of organic matter. And in some cases, I actually managed to zoom in a little bit as well. But it was just too fiddly. I even thought about moving, well, I thought about, I actually did move the little lens over and had a play on video mode. Um, and that was just too difficult as well. So I suppose my takeaway from this, can a smartphone microscope cut it against a conventional microscope? Well, let's put a couple of images side by side. I've absolutely no idea what magnification the smartphone microscope was operating at. I would have thought at max it was 100 times, but probably somewhere between 40 and 100. Um, the answer is quite simply no. Can you use it to do meaningful analysis? Not how I did it. Could you develop it further? Yes, you probably could. But if you're going to spend the time and also the added money to kind of improve things like the staging and how to hold the smartphone to get the steadiest, most consistent image, if you're that serious, to be honest with you, you're probably better either buying one of these little USB microscopes that you shove into your laptop or buy a simple, cheap, monocular microscope in the first place. So there we go. Um, impressive on the one hand, but quite underwhelming. It was never going to cut it against the conventional microscope, I suppose. No surprises there. Maybe next time we could look at expanding on this or doing a different kind of challenge, looking at other systems that exist and pitting them against kind of a proper lab microscope. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So there we go. What did you think to that? If you liked it, if you enjoyed it, then please let me know in the comments below what you thought and maybe give this video a like as well. That really helps me. Uh, I would love to hear from you. I'd like to do another build it or how to video. So I'm always open to ideas. Get in touch to let me know what you think. And until the next video, goodbye.